Assassin's Creed Odyssey was originally released in 2018 and has just been added to Xbox Game Pass. It was one of my favorite games of the past generation, so I wanted to take a look back at just what made this game so special to me. It takes place in ancient Greece during the Peloponnesian War, and you can choose to play as either Cassandra or Alexios. You're Spartan-born, but Athenian-raised, caught up in the middle of this struggle between two nations. It is the most satisfying power fantasy yet in the long-running Assassin's Creed series, and it lives up to its name with a truly epic set of campaigns. Let's break it all down in the Xbox era review of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Odyssey begins with a choice. You can choose either Alexios or Cassandra. They're a pair of siblings who play the same, but their personalities and voices are very different. Alexios has a deep, bass-filled voice that I found hard to take seriously, despite it being well-acted overall. Cassandra is probably my favorite protagonist in any video game ever. Not only is her writing fantastic, but the job the voice actress does is impeccable. She is hilarious, clever, and just really smart as hell. The story begins with you living as a Mystios, which is a mercenary, on a small Athenian island. Quickly, the story shifts to a grand and epic tale spread across multiple paths. From your character's family, to the fate of the war between Greece and Sparta, and even the fate of the entire world itself. Layla is back from Assassin's Creed Origins, and her scenes feature better writing and bigger odds this time. Odyssey is massive. Though, if you have played the more recent Valhalla, it isn't nearly as big as that game. A full playthrough will run you roughly 50 or so hours if you play on normal difficulty and in the discovery mode. This mode offers up only hints of where most quest objectives are located by giving you clues that you can check on the map. If you prefer a more direct approach, you can choose to use a direct waypoint system as well. The clues are quite good though, and I enjoyed the game's exploration more when I was able to more freely find where I needed to go, and boy, are there a lot of places to go. The map in Odyssey is enormous, with both huge landmasses and tons of open sea to traverse. Thanks to the power of modern hardware, once you've unlocked enough fast travel spots, you can bounce around the entire place far more quickly than with the previous generation's hardware. Load times that used to be well over a minute are now 10 to 15 seconds at the most. This is very much an Ubisoft map game, so know what you're getting into ahead of time. I always like to keep things as spoiler-free as possible, so I'll keep the story part short. You will meet a lot of the era's most famous people, but they never feel like they dominate the story. Your Eagle Bearer mercenary is a vital cog in this game's world, and your choices will dictate who lives and who dies. There is a lot of inspiration here from The Witcher 3 and your dialogue choices can lead to romance, death, victory, and even failure. I got lucky and kept everyone alive that I wanted to during my initial playthrough, but with the power of Google, you should feel free to double check and make sure you choose wisely as outside of save scumming, there's no going back if you mess up. One area where Odyssey differs greatly from other Assassin's Creed games is how unbelievably powerful your character can become. There are in-game lore reasons why, and I freaking love the power fantasy here. The Hidden Blade wasn't invented yet, that happened during Origins, so instead you have the broken off tip of King Leonidas' spear. It helps you have superhuman abilities such as teleporting and causing gigantic energy bombs to explode when you slam the ground. It's dumb, overpowered, and incredibly satisfying to use. If you've played Immortals Phoenix Rising, you'll see a lot of that game's ideas here in early forms. There is a massive leveling tree that lends to player choice in a rather clearly defined and easy to understand setup, especially compared to Valhalla's. As you unlock abilities, you can assign range ones to your left trigger and warrior and assassin ones to your left bumper. From bull rushes to Spartan kicks and manually controlling your arrows, the powers are a ton of fun. Everything works off an energy meter that builds up pretty quickly during combat, and the right bumper and right trigger combination attack that varies from weapon to weapon is accompanied by sometimes overly long but really cool looking animations. 
The combat in the game is supremely satisfying though. You will need to master the equipment system to get the most out of it. There are a variety of legendary sets that help with specific things such as gaining more assassination damage, which is one of the few ways your base stealth attacks can one-shot a tougher enemy. The one I ended up sticking with was an all-around 30% damage boost known as the Demigod set. There is also a crafting and upgrade system that can be quite steep in-game money-wise to constantly use, so make sure you choose wisely on what you want to keep using as your character level goes up. There is also going to be a lot of ship-based combat which is tied into a long and grind-filled progression. I did find it a lot of fun personally so I didn't mind, but it does end up being quite a big part of the game, so make sure you want to do that before you get into things. One thing I really do not like is the very slow progression if you don't have the microtransaction that adds to your experience gain. I have it because it came with the gold edition of the game, and if you don't, it takes a really long time to gain a level. It feels like an embarrassing relic from the past for most companies, though with Ubisoft you never know. They do series versions of games for free, but still love having their pay to skip mechanics in these full price titles. Assassin's Creed Odyssey was a great looking game at launch, though it did only run at 30 frames per second on the Xbox One generation of consoles. Recently Ubisoft has patched the game up for the series console and it now runs at what feels like a rock solid 60 frames per second while maintaining a high resolution. It looks fantastic with one of the best looking and most fully realized game worlds in any game that isn't Red Dead Redemption 2. Cassandra and Alexios' models are of supremely high quality, and that holds true for a majority of the game's main cast. There is also a ton of variety in the locations you will visit, and if you dip into the game's DLC, the second one takes you to perhaps my favorite setting in an Assassin's Creed game. The voice acting varies from good to great, with a lot of love given to the main characters, though some of the side characters are either over the top or repeated too often. The music is uniformly excellent, with a mix of new and old themes from the series being used. There is a lot of repetition though in the OST as this is a 50 plus hour game, but the actual amount of unique music is roughly 2 hours long. It's not a major issue, but I did notice it in the later half of my first playthrough. Bug wise, the game's in good shape now, 5 years after release, though the move to 60 frames per second has seemed to lead to some physics wonkiness. Floating NPCs, odd pathing, and the occasional hitch in performance didn't ruin things though, as that silky smooth frame rate made both the ground and naval combat as good as ever. In conclusion, this is one of my favorite games ever. Coming back to it for the third time for this review has only reinforced that feeling. It's gorgeous, well written, has excellent combat, a ton of depth, and with it now being on Game Pass, it is well worth giving it a try. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you can like, comment, and subscribe, it is by far the best way to help this channel grow. And we'll see you here next time on Xbox Era.